meeting and um, without permission of the other person. And, uh, you know, it, it's not appreciated. We welcome everyone to our meeting and people should state who they are. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Martha. Good morning. Martha. Um, I have heard from Aaron Wilder that he will not uh, be able to join us today, but the rest of us are here. So I, I think I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Or Jeff, I, in, I, I came in a little late on what you were saying. Am I all right to go ahead and call the meeting to order? Yes, we were just saying that there's someone that's using David's picture. We don't know who it is and um, we don't appreciate people trying to be imposters and, and we'd like people to state who they are. Uh, uh -huh. we're, we're wel we welcome the community, but we don't like fraudsters. <laughs> well, welcome to all. Um, uh, excuse me, one moment, Martha. So I'm going to have to remove the, someone who is um, impersonating uh, David Bass with his photo, I just for the record. Thank you. Okay, Martha, you can run the meeting. All right, uh, let's call the meeting to order at 11.04. Um, I also note that we have a, a Gravid Bass on the call, um, who I assume is also a member of the public. Um, is there any public comment for items not on the agenda today? Okay, seeing none, I'll move forward to uh, the approval of our minutes. Uh, let me ask you something, though. Uh, Pedrick, I know you were at this meeting, but Aaron is not here, and I'm not sure that we have a quorum of those who were present at the time of the meeting. Shall we um, postpone the approval of the minutes until our meeting next month when everyone is here? Yeah, I think, um, uh, well, we have, um, how many people are here that were at the last meeting, uh, Martha? Uh, Pedrick and myself. Well, um, you two can approve the minutes if you get a uh, motion. Okay, could I have a motion then please to approve the minutes? Yeah, I, I put forward a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, uh, if we can just review them and see if there are any questions or concerns. Uh, Martha, you have to second it. Oh, I'm sorry, I second, thank you. Okay, now you guys can vote. <laughs> have you had a chance to read the minutes, Patrick? Essentially each item that had been on our agenda was put on hold as a result of COVID. Let's just take a moment to review. Yeah, one second. Yeah, I've been able to review it. Okay, great. Um, any questions or concerns about that? It, 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 it accords with my notes as well. Yeah, no. Okay, so all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Good, minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. So I'm excited to introduce um, our newest board member and member of this committee, Chris Kapoff. Uh, Chris, would you uh, uh, say hi and tell us a little bit about your background and interest in, in our work here? Sure, some of the other board members are tired of hearing the story since I've had to introduce myself <laughs> a number of times, so forgive me in advance. But um, this is actually my first uh, board position that I've had, but I have a, an extensive background primarily in um, retail, actually. I was at Macy's for a number of years, but I, I started in the, in the old-fashioned display. It was called display, which was like, you know, visual merchandising and the setup. But then... Um, moved into uh, corporate communications and marketing. And I left Macy's in 2014 as the vice president of marketing strategy for uh, private brands, which are the brands that are only sold through Macy's. And they treated them like market brands. And I joined, um, I joined Ralph Pucci in 2015 as a salesperson. And I became the director last January. So we're right uh, on the street with China down, you know, a couple doors down. And um, hey, and, um, but I thought for this group, I should say that, uh, that I haven't told the other groups that my first actual paying job was running a follow spot at the old globe in san diego and um and i worked in the, my in the first job after that was um working in the uh, costume shop and uh and then i decided i needed a, to study fashion design and i went from there into visual merchandising and that that started my retail career so uh 
uh, and ironically too, this is the first job I've ever had where I have to talk to the public. I've always had kind of back of house jobs like like marketing and visual, and this is the first job where I actually meet the the general population. So uh, I, it's a new thing for me. I, I enjoy it actually. As you can tell, I'm a talky person. That's great. <laughs> well, it's so nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah, I, Hopefully, I, I can see you in person soon. Yeah, China. I think we might have met when you would. Uh, you and Ed used to, I think, have some powwows, and so I think we might oh, have met. Yes. We might have met casually in the yep. showroom last year. Yeah, yep. or a couple years ago. Yep. Last year well, was nice to see you again. You too. So that's it. That's great. Nice to meet you. And Zeke, um, you are sort of joining our committee now as a regular attending member of the community. Do you want to say a little bit about um, your background and reason for being here? Well, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm with the Hudson Theater, and I used to attend. I've been with Hudson Theater for many years, uh, and I'm sort of getting back. Anyway, whatever. I used to attend the bid meetings. It's been years. So I saw this email somehow from Martha, I guess. And I thought, yeah, I should start to pay a little bit more attention again. And I apologize for being away for so long. But anyway, it's good to be back. It's great to have you. Good, good. Yeah. So um, moving forward in the agenda, um, we have this item of arts community current status. Um, and I think, um, China, would you like to speak for a moment to the status of the um, gallery community? Yeah. What is working, what is not, where? you know, support might be needed uh, and what the circumstances are. Yeah, I think for the most part, all of the galleries back in our bid are open, majority by appointment, following lots of protocols, masks, distance, you know, confirming you don't have any symptoms, temperature checks. It all seems to be working very well. Um, speaking for us at Regan Projects, personally, we have not had any cases of COVID, knock on wood, that that stays the case. Um, and I have not heard of any others for the galleries in our bid. I think we're all doing what we can to um, keep going. I think something that committee could support us on, um, and I'm going to kind of take the lead on, is just making sure that Diana um, and our marketing committee have all of the information for openings, events, talks, anything going on. So we can post them on the calendar or include them in newsletters, just become a little bit more visible in terms of the bid, because um, there are quite a number of wonderful spaces. And from my understanding, you know, I joined the board this time last year, so I didn't really have the opportunity to join um, any arts committee meetings because we were put on hold. Um, so this is an exciting time, I think, to kind of restart and rethink about what we can do as you know the world opens up again. Um, and I know that the committee had been previously a little bit more theater focused. So I look forward to working with the theater community and making it kind of a general arts collaboration across the board, whether that be performance, visual art, um, just everything. And I'm sure we might have some dance studios in the bid, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and other support, I would say there are probably other things that we can do in time, but I don't want to, you know, jump ahead too much right now, Martha, unless there's something else you were thinking. No, no, no. I think that's great. And um, one of the things you say is a great word also for Patrick and Zeke and other, um, you know, theater operators here. The more we can work with the new website, I think, that has been created that is really pretty dynamic and get all of our programming and events listed, the more I will become a go-to for stakeholders in the bid itself to check out what's going on. And I think that that will just benefit the community and the activity in general. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'll make sure that you guys have the information to um, communicate with Diane and the folks running the website and the social media and even the newsletter so that we can get more, um, you know, sort of cultural activity circulation uh, on a regular basis. Yeah, and true community engagement, because yeah. right now I, I feel like we're all a little bit disparate. Um, so I'd like to work harder to kind of bring us all together in the bid. Yeah, it would be lovely eventually when things are reopen, um, hopefully in the summer sometime, to mm -hmm. do some kind of very simple um, event, open house or something like that. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, not, not the big theater crawl, but just an open house um, so that people can see some of these galleries that are generally by appointment only or check out the venues and kind of see what's here. Um, Love that idea. 
hey Martha, I have a question. It might be it might be more for Diana and Jeff, but um, yeah. do do the different communities? I'm sorry, the different committees. Do they have like mission statements, or is somewhere is it written down like what the purpose of each committee is? the reason for being and what they're trying to accomplish. I'm, I'm just curious, kind of like China last year, I'm trying to kind of absorb really where there is information or, uh, you know, what to kind of work from. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. No, I was going to actually punt it to you because I believe that <clears throat> in our bylaws, there is something about, you know, there are certain standing committees and, and one of our charters is to, um, you know, have, and as part of, of the marketing is, is to have foster the arts in the bid but I, I i don't is there a mission statement of any kind jeff there's <clears throat> for the bid we have a mission statement but the committees we just sort of set up and we we form an agenda amongst the board members and um you know um that's where new business comes in chris so um if you have a project or something um you want to bring we can discuss it but um yeah the the different committees you know the main focus of course was um is the big part of our budget is security and clean and green, but um, you know the you know in marketing and but the arts are extremely important and um, we want to activate this committee. Um, we went through the downtime last year, dark, a very dark year, and you know people are gonna we're gonna come out of this pandemic and you know the arts is gonna make people happy and and come alive and and we I, that's why i really want to get this committee going and all ideas are acceptable and, and under new business or prior to the meeting if you want something on the agenda um but um <clears throat> you know just state what you want and we can see if we can do it within our budget um if it helps the community um, dark dark was a perfect choice of words <laughs> i think our budget is um sort of a subset of the marketing budget for the bid i think that that's how any initiatives are are funded and um oh i was just gonna say in terms of a mission statement i you know maybe that is something we can think of in terms of our committee not not necessarily officially but just for all of us to kind of have something in the back of our head as a reminder what our goals are i mean jeff yeah, if that definitely. sounds good to to you and martha if that sounds good to you Definitely. Yeah, um, I'll check and see what we have. I, I, we might have a mission statement for the bid, of course, but I don't know if we have it for the committees. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we sort of just get an agenda and, and different board members have great ideas and, you know, we discuss them and, and see if we can put it in the budget to better the community. So then turning to the theater community, and I'm going to let... Um, is, uh, Patrick and Zeke weigh in on this because they're actually doing this day in and day out. But the the our our venues have been closed to the public and they remain closed. There's no live performance that has been approved in California. However, um, at the invitation of the Department of Public Health, I put together a task force with all of the theatrical labor unions. And just this week, we delivered to the California Assembly and to the Department of Public Health a 75-page report recommending how we return incrementally to live performance. This is not something that's going to benefit Live Nation and AEG particularly because it really looks at an incremental return, but I think it will be, if, if we can get some of these, uh, if we can get these guidelines adopted and issued by the state, it is, it's really going to activate the small and mid-sized organizations who have a mission to serve with the public. Um, and. Uh, so I won't go on too much about the detail of that, but if anyone would like a copy of the report, I'd be happy to share it. It's a matter of public record, and um, I'm meeting with um, the Gobe, Governor Gobe's office as well as um, a number of assembly members who are on the Arts, Tourism, Sports, and Entertainment C Committee to talk about this. And so hopefully we will get to something um, the, you know, over the next few months, and then it will roll out incrementally. So in the meantime, I think most of the activity has been um, using venues for modest um, film and tele television projects. Is that correct? I mean, is that keeping you guys afloat or is it? No. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll go for it. I, no, I mean, we have been primarily dark, maybe two or three individual days where we had a, a small shoot. And of course, they have to follow the protocols of film and television, you know. Uh, but no, not keeping us afloat. Certainly just we've been dark been safe <laughs> yeah and how yeah i just want to echo that I mean, 
we yeah we were we were completely dark for the first you know eight months um opened up briefly for some very limited filming in october november just like zeke had maybe two things and then of course in december uh quickly shut everything back down again because it was getting scary and have not resumed so um with numbers coming down we were you know we're now thinking about you know whether filming can occur again but um but it's besides two things you know that have um probably kept our staff going for a month or three weeks um that we've been completely dark um and Let's are you guys the next item on the agenda which are emergency grants and loans for the arts community um first to make sure you guys all got in your um small business grant with cd13 i think the deadline is today did you submit that great yeah and then i'm not sure that this would work for um for the hudson but there's a california arts grant fund um yeah. Arts grant now for organizations on focusing mostly on organizations under two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. We got that. We did get that. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, no, the one with the California Arts Council, not the small business grant, but the not the really ah. one. There's <laughs> okay, the my bad. Maybe we didn't get that. On the, that it's up to thirty thousand um, dollars. That's due in about a week's time. And then you heard about the Getty yesterday, uh, which probably also would impact you guys, China. There's a $38 million fund that has been created again for um, you know, small and mid-sized arts organizations. So I think just making it our business to go after all of these opportunities, yeah. um, I think is important. It's the one thing that we can kind of do to offset all of these costs that we continue to carry. Um, do you have word on any other uh, grant opportunities, China specifically for um, visual arts? No, I'm sorry to say I, I have not heard of any others. I, most of both the gallery and our artists have really um, taken advantage of the small business loans um, that the federal government has been providing. And that's been our main, main focus on that aspect. I should mention to you then that the California Arts Council, as well as the sort of the small, you know, smaller organizational operating fund um, grant has for the first time ever, really put out a lot of individual artist grants, okay. and they might be of interest to your, um, you know, to your artists. Yeah, if you could send me some information on that, that would be incredible. Um, and I would love to see that report as well. Yeah. Um, jumping back super quickly, just a question about the theaters. Um, I know you guys said they're dark, but are you? working in them in any capacity? Like are people there from day to day? I'm just kind of curious, like who's around in the neighborhood? Well, for the Hudson, um, I'm the only one that goes in and I go in once a week to check the mail, to clean up yeah. some cobwebs. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, no, nobody's going in. It's Got really it. completely dark. And we have a restaurant in the building. They are active. They just opened up again for outdoor seating. So the building looks like there's life there, certainly. Um, but we have three spaces, three individual theaters at the Hudson. And no, they're just sitting there. They're just dark. Okay. How about you? Um, we, we were um, completely shuttered, you know, check the mail once a week for the first five or six months. And then um, in the late summer, brought back uh, um, uh, uh, a tech director who now is just by himself in there working and you know, we're trying to we're trying to use this time as as a time to sort of get things in order and you know prepare for people returning. So we're through PPP and stuff. We're able to bring yeah. back one or two. You know, I'm one full time and a part time person. Make sure they don't run into each other, and um, uh, that's what we've been doing. Great, Great. thank you. Um, so let's um, let's move ahead now, and China. I'll turn it over to you to talk about the medians on Highland, the landscaping that's going on and in integrating uh, platforms to host public art. Okay. Um, as you know, Jeff and Diana obviously know and Martha, but um, for some other people, this might be new. We are working to clean up our medians on Highland. Um, as you guys may have noticed, they need some work. We've been repairing everything. We're talking to a landscaping company, working on design. Um, and in part of that conversation, the Clean and Green Committee has started talking about the possibility of including some public art. So we wanted to bring that up here in the Arts Committee um, and see if we could get that conversation rolling. 
Um, we're going to move ahead with landscape design, um, but we do want to do it in such a way that we're prepared to potentially put artwork in of some kind if we can make that a reality. Um, yeah, so in terms of, <clears throat> yeah, um, you know, what I'd like this committee, one of your focuses is um, to come up with a budget uh, for a sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of artists we want to bid um, to, um, you know, a, a commission, whatever you call it, China. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are we going after only artists in the district? Or are we going to open it up to more artists? Um, what kind of design do we want to go abstract or movie mm -hmm. related or media related TV film? <clears throat> um, you know, so come up with the ideas. And I think this committee would be great. We have a lot of creative people and um, you know more than I do about the arts. I just like it. Um, and I, I just like this committee to um, work on that project and, and uh, present to the board the, what, what we come up with. Um, I have no idea what a sculpture of that size would cost and, and how we go about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want this committee uh, to work on it. And I think um, China and Chris and mm -hmm. Martha, you guys are great. And um, I'm sure we can work together to figure it out to better the community with beautiful art. Um, and, for, and, then and for something that important, an artist might be willing to, I, I'm not gonna say donate, but um, probably give maybe a lower price than they would charge to the public because it's gonna be so visible. Mm -hmm. you know, it's gonna be seen by thousands of people a day. So, yeah, and the, and the natural spot for it would be either on our Melrose and Highland uh, median or the DeLong Pre. So it would mm -hmm. be front and center, not buried in the middle. And um, those boulders we talked about could go on another median. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think this is going to be really important and and uh, really beneficial to our community. Yeah, and just a couple other things I want to say just to catch up um, the rest of the group here, Jeff and Diane. I know you're already aware. Um, I am director of operations here at Regan Projects. We're a contemporary art gallery. We have artists who work in a number of mediums. Um, I have taken this to our president and let her know that we're starting to talk about it. Once we as a committee have some more information, um, we can take it to some of our artists and see if they might be interested, if that is something that this committee wants to move forward with. Um, I know some of our artists have, you know, contributed to public commissions before and are open to them. Um, I think it would be really wonderful to have one of them engage with this. A lot of them are very high caliber, but again, you know, Jeff had mentioned, you know, theme, I, you know, I don't know if we want to, suggest anything, limit anything, um, but maybe start thinking about, do we want one or two sculptures? A sculpture is kind of a natural thing because you can't really have drawings or paintings outside. We need something that can live in the environment and withstand any type of graffiti or you know any kind of destruction that people might put in it. Um, you know, I don't know if we want to think about size and materials in my experience, it's better to go with artists um, with a general sense of what you want, but really remaining flexible to kind of allow them to come up with things and their ideas because they might be able to come up with something that's well beyond what any of us could have considered a possibility. Um, so just throwing that all out there for us to think about right now. Um, and then Martha, is it okay if I jump on to the funding aspect of yeah, it? Yeah, please do. I think okay. we could do the same thing, yep. Um, then Martha and I have been in touch and we're going to explore the possibility of some city grants we might be able to get to get some funds, you know, potentially to help pay the artists some sort of stipend to help with installation costs, fabrication costs. Um, so we're going to start seeing what we might be able to do there to take some financial resources outside of the bid. Larger, yeah, they... <clears throat> to, larger developments need to give 1% to the arts. Um, they can designate it in the area where the development is taking place. So they might be able to just designate this directly, mm -hmm. or it goes to the Department of Cultural Affairs. And historically, they have liked to use this 1% for public art. So I think that we have a strong case to make that this would be um, certainly in keeping with the aims of that program. Um, and so uh, that, that's one of the things that we're going to want to pursue. 
and what, Martha, maybe... what, China, uh, what China said and Martha, this is excellent. Um, and I, I think that definitely these grants and the 1% thing should be explored. And then <clears throat> this committee should come up with a budget. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that might be the first step. Um, and then we can go and <clears throat> get artists to tell us what they want to do. And we can just tell them what the bid does. Um, we're Hollywood. Um, and they can come up with uh, their ideas. And uh, But I think the first step, like you said, China's the budget. And Martha knew with the grants and 1% mm -hmm. of the developers. So this, this sounds really, really good. I do want to jump in and add one thing, Jeff. Um, I wonder if we should mention this at the Plum Committee after we get a little bit more information on some of these grants, because the 1%... You know, some of these developments going in, maybe we can at least talk to them about how they're possibly thinking of using it. If they aren't, would they be willing to give that to us directly to do something in the bid? You know, like this new one that's going up um, on Romaine that we just had the presentation about. Yeah, the Post Group and then Ani Group, which mm -hmm. is a huge Canadian developer, is going to build a giant project at uh, Mansfield and Santa Monica. So mm -hmm. um, we can talk to them. Uh, because one percent of a you know a two hundred million dollar project oh, yeah. is a lot of money. You no, know, that will will would do fantastic things in terms of the arts for our bid. So yeah, and, yeah, and maybe we can afford two sculptures. Around, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was doing something around Mansfield and Santa Monica. It would be so neat to um, kind of butt up Highland and Theater Row with mm -hmm. gateway, you know. And I know that there are tri it's tricky because of Caltrans. Um, and maybe impossible, but it's certainly worth, um, really worth investigating. <clears throat> yeah, West, doing West something. Hollywood has figured it out. Exactly. They, West Hollywood, um, I believe, took it back from Caltrans, and that's how they were able to bury the, all the utility cables. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think there's a lot of interest in this bid to you know, take over our portion of Santa Monica, but you can't do that. You have to take it all the way to Western, which becomes a much, much big, and there's so many issues with it, so many inherited problems that it's really a big thing to take on. So I, I, I'm not sure that that will ever happen. But if we can partner with Caltrans and find things that meet their airspace requirements and everything else and their restrictions, it, it, it would be really great. Yeah, Chris, I've been on this board, um, I think now 12 years. And, <laughs> and before I got on the board, that was the focus. And it's been the focus. And it's sort of like a million dollars a block to um, take those lines down. And um, it, 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 according to Ferris, the money's been allocated by Caltrans in the city, but they won't approve it. So it, it sort of like came off our agenda years ago. We sort of gave up. <clears throat> it's a it's a daunting task. Avalon Bay took the uh, lines down in front of their property. Um, if you notice, it's Santa Monica and Las Palmas. Mm -hmm. You know, which it, it, they're ugly, but you know, I don't know where we get the million dollars a block. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's kind of strange because it almost seems counterintuitive for Caltrans if like someone's doing it privately for one block and then the block on either side of them is above ground. I know, but you, you see it in different parts of the city now yep. where these giant developers have um, removed the, the poles and and then the next block has them again. And it's so ugly. You know, this area used to be heavy industrial and it's mm -hmm. now becoming really hip and exciting. And we still have elements that we don't like. Yeah, and let's pivot then to Theater Road projects because, you know, Santa Monica is a boulevard. It should be a grand boulevard, like some of the other wonderful boulevards in this city. And we do have a lot of challenges. So um, there were projects that we were working on before the pandemic, some of which I think we should resume. And then I think we should talk a little bit about the priorities and the vision. Um, I'll speak a little bit to some older projects and Sean Starkey will be back with us next month and he's really um, taking the lead governmentally and seeing how we coordinate between the city of LA, you know, Department of Transportation and Caltrans. Um, one of our idea, one of our requests was that the parking meters, the time be extended on them to allow patrons and um, theater makers to, you know, not to worry quite so much about parking, which is in short supply. I believe that can now be resumed. 
they weren't willing to do anything while the stay-at-home order was in place because they didn't want to be encouraging people to come out, I think. But this should now be an easy thing to see through to completion. The paperwork is all done. Then we talked about lighting, perhaps some string lighting across the boulevard that could be, um, you know, in, input, paid, have the electricity paid for by the stakeholders on either side, but really try to create a sense of place by having lighting um, at each, you know, sort of, main, you know, so there by the Hudson, there by the Broadwater and so forth. Um, I think that Sean ran into trouble with that and we will let him report next month because I think it would be a, a low cost activity that would have a, a lot of impact and would also be good for public safety, um, especially given the state of sidewalks and things like that. So um, I'd be very interested to hear that. Coming soon, we do have new street lamps for Los Angeles that are modern and retro at the same time. And I would love to see whether we could advocate to get those put in along Santa Monica sooner than later as a, as a first stop to begin to help bring back um, the feeling of that and to create the sense that it's um, a better, um, you know, that it's a bit of a destination, cultural destination. The other thing we had been looking into was could we accelerate the, um, the you know, fixing sidewalks by some of these public venues where they really put our patrons, many of whom are retired, at risk. And we'll have to hear about that. But I would love to come back to the bid on this. And Jeff, um, uh, uh, that you'll be involved in this. If We've seen over the years many presentations from different companies that do sidewalk repair. And it would be great if we did actually take on, if there were a way to take on some modest projects where we find the worst sidewalks um, where there is the most kind of public traffic in our bid. I think that that would fit within the, the framework of the safe committee, making the area safer and then also, you know, clean because it will lead to less dirt, less, you know, less trouble in general. What, what is your thought about that? Well, the sidewalks we've discussed before um, this year and last year, um, like Ashley has a tree that uh, roots have pushed up about three feet in the, the sidewalk is dangerous. But um, one, it's very expensive. You need permits, special concrete. Um, and then if we do it for her, um, you know, we got uh, hundreds of other stakeholders that want it for them. And we just thought, wow, we're, we're, this one is a, a big problem because we don't want to, this is all the stakeholders' money mm -hmm. and we can't, we, if we do it for one and everyone said, we'll do it for me and soon our whole budget is doing what the city's supposed to do, right. which so is repair the we'll, sidewalks. We'll have to just double down on our advocacy and, advocacy. Pushing, and pushing to get the city to mm -hmm. prioritize some of these venues. So that, um, but, I think that would be the strategy. And let's see who we can meet and who and who we can really, um, you know, talk about the vision. I do, and I'll let Aaron bring this up next month. I do know that there are also some big plans for development along Cole with the new owners of the, the theater, uh, the television center. And if that happens, the benefit to the entire area will be profound. Um, and I think that if we make our priorities, you know, cleanliness, lighting, you know, walkable sidewalks, perhaps some benches and some simple signage. You know, we had the big plan to do those big medallions, but in, in, instead, if we can focus on maybe some more, something that's in keeping with these street lamps, that's sort of modern, sort of retro, some kind of placard, perhaps with, you know, just like the stainless steel posts that come out and something that hangs that identifies all the venues um, and that is well lit. Uh, you know, I think that if we can, the more we learn about what's coming, the more we could integrate the sense of design. I'd love your input on it, China. And then these are things that are not, um, you know, a lot of, there should be public monies for many of these repairs and then small investment to create something that really gives a better sense of place. Um, I do just want to jump back. Um... To, to what Jeff was talking about. We have been talking about the sidewalks of clean and green and trying to kind of troubleshoot how we can address this issue. I had mentioned this to that committee. I'll mention it since it was brought up here. Um, 
I myself have been looking into this just for the sake of the gallery. Um, we have a few spaces that are by no means as bad as in front of um, Ashley's pub. However, there are a few places where people have tripped before and we don't want our visitors having that issue. In my personal experience, the city will come do it if you submit a request online and you use keywords like this, this is legally required to be ADA accessible. Um, you know, if a wheelchair can't get by and they will come out very quickly, but they'll use asphalt to do it. So it will help the problem, but it won't necessarily visually make it perfect. Um, in some of our own work at the gallery, I recently was on the phone with Matt Construction and just asked them if they had had any luck with the city doing this type of repair and any insight. And they said, no, just do it yourself. We've had, never had any luck. And they're, you know, one of the biggest firms in in the city working. So. The challenge, of course, to do it yourself, then you take over liability and perpetuity. And that's a big ask. So it's not mm -hmm. only the cost, but it's then I understand. the responsibility. Um, if, if the city came out and were to repair with, with asphalt, would, would, an, a, would, a, would an owner or the bid be able to go in and replace that with cement without changing liability or responsibility do we know I, no i don't think we know that yet i think that's a question we'll have to answer let's investigate because that might be you know the mm -hmm. partnership then between the city and then you know just a more simple piece there. yeah and if they were willing to work with us in any way on that i think that could help all of these problems across the bid yep um, can I, I just want to note real quick that we do have the council <clears throat> person nithia Nithya Raman coming to our board meeting, and we will be submitting a list of questions and, and concerns from the bid to her to address. And one of them is the sidewalk repair. And hopefully um, we can somehow collaborate or partner with them to you know provide a budget in some way to help repair the sidewalks, or at That's least uh, the, the, the priority ones that we've identified. And so the security team has also provided a comprehensive list of the entire district, um, you know, from worst to least of the sidewalks that are in dire need of repair. So we have we have all that information already. Great. Yep. That's helpful, Diana. That's a great step. Thank you so much. So, um, Pedro and Zeke, when you're thinking about coming back, what I mean, are there external facing elements that um, would be particularly helpful to you guys? Uh, okay, well, external facing elements. You know, I remember years ago we had the banners on theater. I think you sort of just mentioned uh, venue markers. I thought that when those existed, they were quite helpful to help promote the area, to help identify the venues. Um, they were up for a number of years and started to look shabby after a while they were the band, you know, so I don't know that that's the best thing, but something, and you already touched on it. I think something like that would be great. Um, I don't know, Patrick, you got anything? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think markers to, it's not like there are 10 theater back to back and it's all three businesses and then another theater and four businesses you know so any way to sort of if someone is traversing down this living it would be obvious that well that's a theater oh there's another theater oh there you know and even with the galleries too if it, that it's that these artistic businesses are i are there's a uniformity they're all different bu buildings and they're all different organizations but if there's something that is uniform to say this is another marker this is this is a theater that then i think it would make it feel like um um you know yeah, it would be, I, it would be more unified so i remember whether something that's years ago. something on the walls or a flag <laughs> yeah I, I remember something years ago that was talked about in these meetings or even you um, know, go ahead well, I remember. Oh, no, I was just going to say that, that <laughs> even if it the history, I know, I think it's my Internet. Um, it even the history of the built, you know, these are very old buildings, a lot of the, the theaters that are operating. And so even sort of 
you know, this is theater, th this theater is here, and this building was built in 1912. And, you know, that would even touch the theaters to what came before the theaters. I'm very, I mean, the Broadwater is a very old building. And, and so I'm very interested in, in moving forward independently, even. Um, I just had an idea, actually, while Zeke was talking. Um, this might be a little bit more manageable for us to put on our radar. And Diana, something like this may already exist. But do we have any kind of bid for our map that's arts and, arts and culture focused. So if someone were coming to one of our businesses, whether it be a theater, a gallery, a restaurant, you know, and wanted to know what was in the area that they could experience, you know, they would see all the galleries in the bid, all the theaters in the bid, you know, our Ralph Pucci, like anything kind of arts, culture, design related, you know, apparatus. I think that could be really interesting and maybe something that's more manageable for us to do. Yeah, we, we're definitely working on putting together that business resource list. Mm -hmm. It goes along with the reorganization of, you know, moving resources into one area on the website. So it, it's in production. Okay. Yeah, I love the idea of an arts map or maybe arts and restaurants, you know, just yeah. what are we doing after five? Well, and I just, I say it because we always get people in the gallery. I mean, a little less now because of COVID, but still somewhat who, where can I go have coffee? Where can I go have lunch? What can I go do next? What other galleries are in the area? What are their hours? So we have our own little internal document that, you know, has the other galleries nearby and those details, you know, and we suggest a few coffee shops here and there, which luckily have been expanding in the last few years. Um, but I do think that could increase traffic for all of us. I, I love you know, that. Um, no, let me just say one thing. Like when I've been to Scottsdale, Arizona, they have an art walk, um, I, I think from six to nine or whatever the hours are every Tuesday. And, it, and the people know it's every Tuesday at that hour. And, and the, they have a lot more galleries than us. But, you know, this committee might explore. Um, there's a, I, I don't know what are there, four or five galleries right within two blocks. And, you know, we might be able to promote it on the bid and you and you guys can hand out cards when your customers come in to, to the galleries and, and just have a little art walk. But, you know, each individual gallery either gives you a little wine or cheese or, or water or whatever it is. And, and, you know, it helps promote your sales. I think we'd love to do something like that when we all get a little closer back to normal. I think that would be something great to look forward to. Well, maybe maybe this committee um, can start planning so that yeah. we can, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm just trying to throw out ideas. You guys are the real creative ones. And, um, you know, we, we really want to activate this committee um, for you guys to promote. And Chris, you got four or five uh, design uh, um, companies all in one area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it could be design night uh, once a month or whatever. You know, we, we can do a lot. And, and um, you know, the, I know the, the board really wants to support this committee and the arts. And maybe we could do some sort of event a couple times a year or every month seems like too much, but potentially an art walk, but for all aspects of our community. So maybe the theaters could do like short summaries of performances they have going on or something manageable. So people could kind of pop in and get a sense of what's going on without committing to. Yeah, know, I, I don't want to spend a, a big money on all this, but I mean, oh. we can promote it. And then the, the customers know, you know, once a month or one, whatever it is that uh, this is the place to be to see art or design or... I think we could do this with just marketing on social media, Jeff, and our newsletter. I don't think we need to really spend very any money on it. But it's exciting, you know, where we, we're really promoting our businesses and um, our district, you know? I think, and, once and, get, uh, I think once we get word that things can open a little bit more, then we should talk about an open house slash art walk, um, and we can do one and you know promote it and i think everybody will like it want to see what's out want to see what's there and then you know we can go from there and see you know what works and what might be interesting to do quarterly or twice a year mm -hmm. yeah so uh, it's exciting martha um uh, we got all this art uh, all different types of art in our district and it's very exciting yeah, I would love everyone to keep an eye, keep keep their minds open and imaginations going about what 
what can we do along Santa Monica Boulevard to help it feel less industrial and to make it feel more walkable, more welcoming, um, and more interesting? So, uh, you know, we had one time talked about murals, you know, that could be revived. Things that are um, just unusual, not sort of ersatz, you know, just something that says this is um, a, a creative environment. Something that maybe I'll just throw out there in case it gets people's minds going is some sort of like historical marker in certain areas, especially if we have these theaters that have been around a very long time. I don't know if it's a plaque or a marker on the sidewalk or, or whatever it is, but just to give you some sense of history. I mean, I used to live in the UK and if you go to all kinds of buildings around there, there's always you know, a historical plaque on someone's door or next to it saying, you know, Ben Franklin stayed here when he was ambassador or so-and-so used to live here. And something like that could be a nice touch to add a sense of like Hollywood history to the area that yes, would we be did, more welcoming. Um, some years back, we did commission, Lori commissioned um, a history of the bid. And so we do have stories of the buildings. That's what we basically have. Some of them are really flamboyant and others are just, this is what happened here. But we could go through there and for, you know, organizations that are interested, we could pull out. And again, that is that is really nice when you're walking, when you can pause yeah. and read a little bit of history. I think it always, you know, it makes you feel like, oh, there is a history here. Well, and so, would it make sense to, I you know, I don't know what these write-ups of these stories look like, but for us to share them kind of across the board and talk about it with the marketing committee in terms of maybe posting one of those stories once in a while in a newsletter or online or somewhere. Yeah, there's some fun ones. Yeah. It's on the website, right? Because I, I think I read it. You may have. There's you know, downtown, they, they put these little uh, kiosk up. There's not, it's not manned. It's just a sort of a monument. And it has the story of the area and, and things and the history. And I don't know if anyone looks at them or they just use it to, for a, a, a pigeons to stoop on. But, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. But, yeah, you know, Marta, like when we make the agendas, um, you know, we can get these things on the agenda and just the, we, we make recommendations to the board in a budget. And, and the first step is a budget. Um, and we can work with the finance committee for a budget for things. But, you know, maybe don't get too scattered, you know, maybe focus on one project at a time. And, of course. So we can get it done. I, I, I really like the sculpture idea if we want to focus on that, you know, and, and then just move on to other art projects. Jeff, yeah. I totally agree. I think that's the natural place to start since the board and, and Clean and Green are very focused on the mediums. Yeah. And, that, you know, that's not going to take a lot of time once we have a budget and, and then we can go to all these other projects to promote Santa Monica Boulevard and and, and the history and, and beautify the area and other, you know, another one is, you know, the, um, we brought it up years ago, Martha, and we never did. It was uh, painting the, um, the uh, uh, utility boxes and commissioning artists. And, you know, that could be a project, uh, you know, over the summer. So, you know, a lot of good things. Yeah, we could take, a couple of, you know, we have some bus stops and that's one of the places where often, you know, in Europe, you'll see something, they, they'll have a little, like, like a little wall behind it or something on the side where you get one of those history plaques or a map of in this area. And that might be a way to uh, both provide some of that map information that we're talking about, a little bit of history, as well as visual interest. Well, those are private, um, you know, owned. So we'd have to talk to the entity that owns those, but uh, all really, really great ideas. And um, I, I have great, great uh, hope for this committee this year. Yeah, I think if we can combine now some of these ideas and have them, then we, can, um, then we have a vision for the whole, and then we just look at one thing at a time and investigate and see how we can carry it through and if it is even reasonable. But we have plenty of plenty of things to work on. Yep. Uh, I think we have largely covered new business. Um, does anyone else have new business to introduce today? Good. Well. In that case, I will adjourn the meeting at 11.52 and see you guys in a month. All right. Thank Have a great you. day. COVID cases lower, 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 lower. Everybody come in. Come see the show. Yeah.
we're here. <laughs> it looks and great, by the way. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, we're great. having a weird thing happening where a helicopter is buzzing so low that it's setting off the car alarms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not the type of art we want. <laughs> All right. Bye, All right, everybody. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye. bye.